Hey guys, it's Heather from Here She Grows, and I'm really excited to do this video for you today because it's for you and for me because I aspire to be a lifelong gardener. And to garden for the rest of my life means I have to maintain good strength, build strength, and be aware of good body mechanics, which is the whole gist of this video, is to show you how to maintain strength or build your strength and move properly in the garden so that we can garden for the rest of our lives. And I'm gonna have a good friend with me here today who is an expert in all of these things and she's currently training for the Chicago Triathlon. I've watched her train clients of all ages, all abilities, and she is phenomenal with her expertise and how she scales workouts based on the abilities of her clients. So, but give you a little background on this. So. Utah State University a few years ago um, did a study and they were curious about the, the rate of injury among gardeners. And it's really hard to quantify what that looks like because most of us, when we get injured in the garden, um, we self-medicate, we take time off from the garden and depending on how severe our injuries are, um, sometimes we're off for a few days, sometimes it's a few weeks, sometimes it's months, and sometimes we're off forever because we've damaged our backs so badly. And they decided to look at those numbers um, and to get a better idea of what that looked like and what were the most common injuries. They decided to look at landscape companies and groundskeepers to see just what injuries were most prevalent among gardeners. And what they found was back injuries, knee and hip injuries, wrist and hand injuries, lots of overuse injuries. So Utah State University took all of that information and developed a protocol for their master gardener program. And in their training protocol, they introduced exercises and body mechanic programs for their, their Master Gardener volunteers so that they could share that in the field with their volunteers as they were doing work. And then, so over a period of six months, they had them use those exercises, those lifts, those body mechanics. Then they analyzed them six months later and asked them to complete a survey based on how they perceived their pain, how they perceived their strength, their movement, and how well they did over that six month period of gardening. And what they found was astounding. They found a lower incidence of perceived pain, less arthritis issues, less injuries altogether. So that just inspired me even further to move forward with this video with my friend Tony and create something here that we can do from home. And anytime you're starting a new exercise program, you wanna make sure first that before you jump in, you wanna get permission from your doctor and make sure that you're healthy to do these sorts of things. And what I'm gonna show you today is nothing that would require a gym membership or lots of weight, weight equipment, nothing like that. It's things that we can do from the comfort of our own home and to get the work done and prepare our ourselves for the garden season ahead. And for cold climate gardeners like me and maybe you, we spend a lot of time in the off season, maybe more sedentary than we'd like to be, and we're not that active. So then those first few warm days in the spring hit and we are all in. We jump out there and we're gardening all day and then the very next day we can't move. So I'm hoping that this video will help remedy some of those things, help you build strength in the off season because as a lifelong athlete, and my friend who you're going to meet in a moment, she's a lifelong athlete as well. Athletes know that they make their strength gains in the off season. This is my off season, winter is off season. So this is the time we gain strength, we work on our body mechanics so that when it's time to perform, come April and May and June, all, all summer long, we're able to do so injury-free, pain-free as much as possible. And hopefully today you will learn a few moves so that you can start building strength, understanding how to lift things properly so that we can garden pain-free all year long. Okay, I'm super excited guys because my good friend Tony Moran is here and we've talked about this for years. Yeah. I've mentioned it to you like three or four years ago and she's finally here and I'm super stoked because Tony is a pro. I've watched her train people of all ages and abilities and she does it like a champ. Tony, what's your background? So I went to school a long time ago. <laughs> I was in school about 40 years ago. So I did exercise physiology when I came out. Women actually weren't accepted in the fitness field and I could not get a job anywhere but Women's Workout World. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to go to Women's Workout World and learn how to teach aerobics, which was not my thing, but I stuck with it. I ended up at the park districts where I trained. I had my own business on the side. I've trained Olympic athletes. I've trained Miss Illinois. I've trained people with disabilities. I've trained older individuals and I've gone to the park district and now I'm semi-retired and just training and doing what I love and here with my good friend. And she's so excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to be here. 
Tires is my favorite thing. That's right. We've flipped some tires up big hills outside, <laughs> and hammers, I've yeah. gotten the best workouts with Tony. So, what the goal here today is to share with you things that you can do from home. Um, you don't need, you know, specialized equipment. You don't need a gym membership because the goal is to build muscle, build strength, build good body mechanics, so that we can garden for as long as we want to garden, and we're not going to be limited by injuries. So, what Tony's going to do is show us and explain to us exactly what we need to do. And I think the most important thing that I see a lot of times in the gym, and I'm a frequent gym goer, <laughs> is people stretching a cold muscle. And that also relates to gardeners because I'm guilty of it as well. I jump out into the garden before I've done anything and things happen, wrench my neck or whatever, because I've not warmed my body up before I've stretched. So what would we do before we even think about stretching? We know we're gonna be in the garden, what should we do as far as warming up goes? Okay, so we should warm up, not stretch. Mm -hmm. That is the first thing, okay. right? So we're gonna warm up our muscles in a dynamic form using the same motions we're gonna use out when we're gardening. And so we wanna warm up the muscles and move them slowly through patterns of motion that are gonna bring the blood flow and get them into a flexible state without stretching them. Mm -hmm. So back to our original days, <laughs> You probably as well. Yeah. We used to static stretch before we worked out. Mm -hmm. Science has shown that static stretching actually relaxes the muscles. And then we go to lift something and it's like push and they're not really able to push or we can actually hurt ourselves that way too. Mm -hmm. So we should keep stretching till after we're done. And you, everyone should stretch when they're done because gardening is a very strenuous activity mm -hmm. we're using a lot of muscles so when we warm up we want to warm up in a dynamic fashion so we can go through a few okay if you'd like lead the way <laughs> so you guys when you um garden you do a lot of bending and hinging at your hips so you're going to use a lot of your posterior chain which is actually your entire lat your back your mid trap and your glutes understanding that your core is not just your abs, which well, your abs are your abs. Your core is actually the trunk of your body and our biggest depletion, especially as we age, is actually our posterior chain, which are our glutes, the, our mid traps and our lats because we do a lot forward and so we end up with this motion and we wanna be here. So the first thing we will warm up is there and one of the greatest warm ups that I like for my hamstrings is you're just gonna stand here, you're gonna put a heel forward you're going to take your hands, you're going to drive past your back leg and scoop up. And you should feel that in your hamstring and switch. Do you feel that exhale? I do, yeah. Right when you feel like you should hold your breath, you're inhaling right here. You're going to exhale and scoop up. So we're just bringing that blood flow to our hamstrings, glutes. We're also going to our calves. Right now, we'll only do like four on each side. I would recommend 10 and then going through this a couple times before you go out. Okay. So we're going to be here. You want to start with those big muscle groups. One more. Now, I'm going to show you two different ways because some of you might not be able to go all the way to the ground. But rotation is the other area where people get injured. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you guys lift, you turn, you're pulling, and you're moving in a lot of rotational mm -hmm. moves. But when people get in the gym, they work everything straight. Right. So it has been found that really you need to work your muscles through rotational. Mm -hmm. So when we warm up, we want to do the same. So we're going to put one foot forward. The other one's going to be back. Our knee is stacked over that ankle and our back leg is strong. We're going to go head down and the opposite hand is going to go right next to that foot. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach in the air and we're going to look at that hand. And my hand is again stacked right over that shoulder. And I'm going to come back down and I'm going to breathe. And I'm going to go back up. These mov movements don't have to be fast. In fact, the first few should be nice and slow, rotating through. And as you feel smoother, you can go ahead and pick up the pace a little bit. Again, doing 10 on each side. We'll do five. And then we're going to go ahead and switch. So you're just going to switch feet. Stack right over that flat back, chest up, ears always even with your shoulders. Hands stack down. We're going to go ahead, look up, rotate. We should feel this right through that thoracic spine. Feel what that. are we doing with our, our, are we tightening our abdomen, our core, keeping your, it tight while we're? Good doing? question. Mm -hmm. Your abs should always be tight. <laughs> your core, your belly button should always be pulled in. So your back should never be arched. Your belly button should be pulled in. 
And one of the ways I like to cue that is you are standing in a cold ocean. One more. And you're only up to your thighs in water. Go ahead and stand up. And the cold wave is coming at you and you know it's gonna hit your stomach. And what do you do? That's how you should feel <laughs> all the time. So when you pull that in, don't arch your back. That's how we should be standing all the time and our shoulders pinch back. Mm -hmm. Another thing we're gonna um, warm up is our chest and we're gonna warm up our shoulders at the same time. I grabbed some bands. You can use a band, you can use a bathrobe, mm -hmm. tie, anything that has length to it. So I'll give you Could like a broom, like a, a broomstick you kind could. of thing? Is that too much? It depends on your shoulder flexibility. Okay. And if you have shoulder injuries, please don't take this all the way around. So you're going to grab it as far as you need to to get all the way over. You'll figure out where that is. I always grab the handles as well so I don't whack myself. Now, feet are down, about shoulder distance apart. Knees are always easy. If you lock out your knees, so go ahead, lock them uh -huh. out. Right away, you arch your back and you stick your stomach out. It's going to put all that pressure here. So we want easy knees, not bent, but easy, stomach tucked in and kind of like a C. Shoulders pinch back, arms are here. What you're gonna do is bring it all the way up, over, and all the way back. And then up and over. And as you do these, keep your stomach tucked in, ears even with your shoulders, and you're in a straight line. Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. And your heels are grounded. As you do these and warm up, you might be able to move your hands in a little bit more. It feels good. That feels good. You're going to feel so good. <laughs> it feels really You're good. You're going to be like, wow, I never knew I, if I warmed up, I felt this good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll just do like two more. Now, how frequently should we... And last one. Well, we're actually not even there yet, but like You're the okay. weightlifting stuff, the repetition. So... How, for warm-ups, how many reps would we want to do of each exercise when we're warming up? So you would want to do 10, and I'm going to say you're going to want to do it for about six minutes. So it's going to depend on your speed. Mm -hmm. Some people might get through it twice. Some yeah. people might get it through it once. Sometimes you might get it through it three times. Mm -hmm. Because everyone listening is going to be at a different fitness level to right. start. Right. So I can make recommendations. You're going to have to choose what your fitness level is. It's just like weight, reps, and sets it's really going to depend on beginner like i've done Where nothing sure. and i have a difficult time mm -hmm. everybody wants to build their foundation right now mm -hmm. and the way you have to look at that is if you have a house and you don't have a good foundation it's going to tip over same right. thing for you mm -hmm. right? right so right now we're building foundation so higher reps mm -hmm. volume mm -hmm. not super heavy weights right and probably two to three sets depending okay. on your ability Okay. So like someone as fit as you, I would be more like three reps, okay. maybe eight to 10 reps, mm -hmm. you know, eight to 10 reps, three sets. Okay. Somebody okay. maybe a little less trained, mm -hmm. it would be maybe two sets with 12 to 15 reps and okay. lighter weights. Makes sense. Yes. So okay. everything's going to differ based on the person. Okay. Very good. What's next? All right. So we so are warmed up. We've already done our thoracic, our legs, our shoulders, our chest. Okay. So now we can go into the workout. So my thought was, you know, I'm just thinking of like uh, a bag of soil. That's 40 pounds. That's heavy. So, and if you're lifting soil, like I've been guilty of just this, you know, mm -hmm. and all back and I'm not squatting down like I should be sometimes. So having a good foundation of strength and understanding how to lift those things mm -hmm. is super important for back health. So oh, yeah. back Strength, back health is tied to glute strength. Is that right? That's correct. So okay. all of this is attached. So, so your, your, post, your butt. This is um, your posterior chain. Right. It is all connected. Yes. Yes. So and it also has to do with keeping your core in. Okay. Because the problem is, if I reach over and now I'm letting this lax, I'm arching my back. When I arch my back, instead of using my glutes, all the pressure goes on my lower back, and that's usually when you have the pain. Right. So it's keeping your core tight, which is the trunk of your body. Shoulders pinched. Chest up, shoulders back, stomach in. If you are like this, most of the time, you're going to prevent injury. Okay. All right. So what would be the first thing you recommend as far as, should we start with glutes and like squatting? What, we, you know, okay. what would be the right movement? Or So for picking up a bag of soil, there's going to be two different ways to do it because you could deadlift it, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is bending over and hinging, mm -hmm. or you could squat because okay. you do have gardeners out there that aren't going to be able to use their that's knees. True. They're not going to be able to squat. Mm -hmm. So we can show both motions well, that's great. and yeah. then kind of give you ideas of how to do it. Okay. So we can start with the, the Perfect. squat. Perfect. 
and I will teach it from the chair, which is the best way to teach it. Me, personally, when I start, because a lot of tendencies, especially if you are a woman gardener, you have what's called the Q factor. Every woman has this, or 99%, and what it is is our hips are wider than our knees, right? Because we birth children. Right. That's just genetically how we are. Well, because of that, we have a tendency for our knees to veer in because we're stronger here, weaker here. When we do that, over time, our kneecap doesn't slide correctly, and that can be a lot of your knee pain. Mm -hmm. So when people go to squat, and I'm going to do this wrong first, so if I go to sit down and my knees go in, and then when I go to squat, my knees come out, I'm using this outside of my leg, which is stronger to begin with, weakening this inside. So a good way to do it, a pillow, a little ball. If you put it between your knees, and now my feet are straight down from me, everything is stacked over, so shoulders, hips, stomachs in, knees, ankles, and now the ball is there. Make sure your chair is there. And you're just gonna sit straight down, okay? When I come up, I will feel if I squeeze the ball, plus I can't come in. Mm -hmm. But if I do squeeze the ball, I'm actually strengthening these inner thighs. So it's doing two things at one time. When you go to stand up, you wanna think about a string pulling you straight up. You do not want, ugh, that is not a good squat. It's not helping you at all. Also, you don't want to push off the chair. You want to get up where you don't have to touch the chair. So your heels are down, and you feel like you are pushing the ground away from you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so squeeze your butt. If you notice, when I squeeze my butt, my head will raise automatically. All right, we're going to squeeze our glutes. We're going to come straight up, stomach in, and we're going to stand straight up, and then we're going to go straight down. So we want to keep everything tight, and this is, now we'll pretend that that's our dirt. And we're here. It will give us the ability. Also, your dirt should be almost even with your toes. Never leave it go way out in front of you. Mm -hmm. The closer it is to your legs when you come up, mm -hmm. the less likely you are to injure your back. Okay. All right. So when I go down, I'm going to grab the bag of dirt. I know where the dirt is. My head is up. My knees do not go over my toes. I am not in my toes. I'm in my heels. My chest is high. My ears are even with my shoulders, my shoulder with my hips. I'm going to grab my dirt. I'm going to push the ground away from me through my heels and squeeze and stand up. Okay? Perfect. So. And we could do that with a towel or a pillow or something too if we didn't have You a, could start with a pillow. Yeah. Okay. You can add a bag of sugar. It's oh, five yeah. pounds. I would put it in a Ziploc. <laughs> and you can go up from there. Oh, that's a good because idea. you kind of want something that's going to have that same movement. Mm -hmm. I love bags of sand, it sounds weird, mm -hmm. but you can get different size bags of sand and then sure. you can put them in a Ziploc okay. and it's going to give you a little bit better consistency, I guess, with your exercise because like, if I'm picking up something that's solid, it's not like picking up a bag of dirt that's right. going to be uneven. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Excellent. So make sure it's close to the body. It's not so out, we're not out here with the bag, we're down here. We're down we're here, lifting. right? Okay. Heads up, and if you do look down, grab it. Make sure you're back in this position. So you always want ears, shoulders, hips in that straight line, back aligned, and you come up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for people who have knee issues, what's their option? So then we go into the deadlift, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So that is more hinging from our hips. Mm -hmm. But we can do this very safely, and I'm going to turn side sideways. So same thing. I'm down. Feet are down. Now, understand, my toes are forward but everyone genetically is made a little bit different. So if your toes go out a little bit because of the way your hips are, your mm -hmm. range of motion, that's fine as long as they're even. Okay. So the only thing you don't want to see is like one is this way and one is this way because that means you have an imbalance and you're trying to use one more. But if it's just like this is naturally where I go, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. Okay. Science has changed. <laughs> it, it's fine now. All right. So a deadlift. You are here, everything in a straight line, stomach always in, back always back, shoulders pulled, ears, shoulders, hips in the straight line. This starts from a hip hinge and can end with a hip hinge. The idea is your heels are what are grounded and my chest is always going to stay up and I don't let my shoulders fall even when I go down to pick up that weight. So my shoulders are going to stay back. I'm going to go down. I'm going to hinge from my hips. 
Now, once I get to this far, if I need to for range of motion, because some people are tight, I can bend my knees a little bit, but it's not like a squat. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna push the ground away, so it's gonna be my knees are gonna straighten, and then I'm gonna squeeze. Okay. So the difference is, it's hips, knees, knees, hips. Okay. Whereas a squat is, you push back your knees bend, you're not truly hinging. Mm -hmm. The biggest fault is that we let this part of our trunk fall. So as I go down to get this, I go like this, I roll this. As soon as I roll this, my stomach, my back is not arched, and then I feel all of it in my lower back. So mm -hmm. I need to keep that trunk or the core tight and pick it up. Okay. And I would do the same thing. I would use sand mm -hmm. or sugar, flour, okay. something in a loose bag, sure. because as it moves, you're gonna have to be more stable. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing with gardening mm -hmm. is you have to work through those motions because right. if everything is just a weight and stable, but then you get out there and it shifts, mm -hmm. that's what's gonna hurt you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Now what sort of thing, I understand the movement thing, that's wonderful. What type of thing can we do squat related to build, to help build some, some glute strength so that we've, you know, we've, we're prote also protecting our back. So what would we do? Chair squats repeatedly, or what would you recommend? Chair squats, mm -hmm. yes. Deadlifts, yes. Mm -hmm. Any kind of step up. So even if you have stairs at home, mm -hmm. you know, stepping up and put, driving out of that foot that's on top of the step and going back down. So anytime you are stepping up and carrying yourself up hills, okay. if you have hills outside, mm -hmm. even walking the hills, big steps, driving forward, mm -hmm. that's going to help your glute strength. Okay. So. Stairs are probably the best thing that you have in your home when it's cold out. Okay. Once you can do one stair, do two stairs. Once you can do Could stairs, a standing stairs, one, stairs. if you didn't have stairs, something like this, would that be helpful? That would be helpful. Okay. Just stairs would be better. To it, stairs are better. Yeah, yeah because okay. deadlifts and squats will get it too. Lunges are good. Lunges are probably with the, one of the most incorrectly performed yes. exercises yeah. there are, and it's one of the reasons that I don't go to them right okay. away, Good to and know. especially if you have somebody with knee issues, mm -hmm. um, whereas stairs, you can keep that knee back over that toe. It's like automatic when you go up, okay. whereas if I'm doing a lunge and I'm improper, when I go forward, all that now all that weight went in Goes there full. if I'm okay. not doing it correctly, whereas you're not going to really do that on so stairs. So stairs are your best and your safest option. Yes. For or if you have stairs. a little step stool. Okay. As long yeah. as you're somewhere safe where it's not going to slide. Okay. Right? You just yeah. always want to make sure safety first. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And okay. always do same amount on each leg. Mm -hmm. However, if you know you have an imbalance, do two more on your weak leg. So should we be doing this a couple times a week? Start, yeah. depending on your... Again, depending on your yeah. ability, mm -hmm. if you're a beginner, two times a week. Okay. If you're more advanced, three times a week. Okay. Very and good. then the other days, a lot of stretching yoga. Okay. Yoga is great. Okay. It works us through a lot of different planes of motion mm -hmm. and strengthens and gives us that isometric because you're out there for a long time. Great. You're holding your core. Right. Which is why we're doing this video right now <laughs> because this gives us plenty of time to prepare. I mean, it's February and hopefully... I prefer to be out sooner than later, but we may not That's be able to garden until I know. It's going to be 50 this week. I know. I, I know. can't wait. Yeah. Um, but we may not be able to garden, you know, really garden until maybe April, yep. maybe even May sometimes. But that gives us plenty of time yep. to build. Athletes make their gains in the off season. And I see this as off season, building strength and the whole mm -hmm. thing. So what should we do next? How about we do a couple partner things? Yes. <laughs> All right. So if you have a partner that you garden with or you just want to get in shape and you know, I don't get to see Heather that very often. So we can do <laughs> squats and we can do partner squats. We can do them a couple ways. And this is a more advanced move. Okay. So like, don't just do this with anyone. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take wrists and we're going to cross them and we're going to hold them. Okay. Feet are planted, now shoulders up and back. We're going to mm -hmm. look at each other and we're just going to go down and squat. But now we can lean further back. You can lean further back because I hold oh, you wow. and go straight up. Oh, that's awesome. And we're going to go straight down. Okay. Because now my shoulders are right over my hips, whereas if I'm doing this by myself, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to let Heather do one by herself. So are our legs at a 90-degree angle? Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. So now, you see how straight her back was her hips. Now do one without holding on to somebody. See how her, her shoulders are closer to her knees? Is that right or wrong? It's not wrong. It's where your strength is. Okay. This allows us just to have a different strength and to strengthen our back more because oh, now... Yeah. 
we're back here, we're upright, and we're coming back up. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. I and you can it. do it with your friends. Yeah, I know. Fun. <laughs> and yeah, I know, right? right? <laughs> so now we're going to go back to back. Okay. All right. All right. So same thing. We're going to lean against it. We have to trust each other. Oh, gosh. It's like Did that falling thing. Yep. All right. So you push against me. I'll push okay. against you. Okay. Get your feet a little in front of you. Right. And here we go. We're okay. going to squat and go back up. That is and so squat. cool. Woo! <laughs> Don't let me go. There you go. The other one is a little safer. Okay. And then a good one for our shoulders, our back. Okay. Because okay. you're lifting, you're squeezing, you're pulling. Mm -hmm. I know you're good at planks, so we're going to do this yeah. one. Okay. So we're going to both go down on a plank, and I'll explain a plank. You, okay. Your feet can go that way. Our heads are going to face each other. We're going to be a full plank, so up on our hands. So our shoulders are stacked over those wrists. Ears, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, straight line. Belly is tucked in. And what we're going to do is we're going to try not to roll our mm -hmm. butts. And what I mean by that is we're not rolling. I know you're strong enough. <laughs> oh, we're going to come over and tap hand. Put it down. Tap hand. Don't let your butt oh, move. I feel it. Yeah. Don't let your butt move. My butt's moving. Don't let it. No, you're doing great. <laughs> the way to know is to put a weight on it. Okay. There you go. Now, let's say we were more beginners. We go to our knees. When you're on your knees, everything is still in a straight line. You're not a cat drinking out of a water dish. You are here. You want to be there? All right. We'll be here. Is that okay? We can do the same okay? thing. Yep. Butts tight. Squeeze. You will still feel those through your whole core and your oh, glutes. Oh, I do, yeah. This is isometric. And that does what for us? This is going to uh, strengthen your entire core and your posterior chain. Plus, we're working our shoulders right now. Awesome. And so, you know, when you're weeding and you're trying not to get all the seedlings that are down here and you don't want to step in it and you have to reach over it, this is an excellent yep. exercise. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't have a friend, put things out in front of you. Get in this position. Pick them up. Put it down. Oh, that's a great idea. Pick oh, it sorry. down. Put it down. I know. Mm -hmm. You just want to keep high five. <laughs> so that is another that's one. That's fantastic. All right. All right. Very good. So where are we going from here? I we have a chair. Do we want to push a chair? Or do we want to carry some weights? Or? So there's different things that we can do with that. And understand, you can use a milk jug, a water jug, a five-gallon water jug, I believe weighs eight to ten pounds. One in each hand, farmer carrier carries, which we'll show you now, mm -hmm. but we're going to use weights. It's really important. Let's say you had two buckets, and so now you have to fill them, pick them up, and you have to carry them somewhere. You want to be able to do both at the same time. I know my five-gallon jugs of water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, I just want to carry this one. Right. right? <laughs> so we're going to use um, these weights, but you can use, like I said, jugs. Let's go grab okay. our weights. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah, let me just slide it over. Always pick your weights up like you're working out. Yep. So bend your knees, flat back, pick them up. So we can pretend these are water jugs, buckets. So let's say they're on our ground. So you can, would you like to squat or deadlift to pick yours up? I will squat. I will deadlift. <laughs> so I will deadlift. I'll grab mine. She's going to grab hers. Go ahead. Let's pick them up, flat back. And now we need to carry them. The biggest thing is shoulders up and back. You should be pulling your shoulder blades together and your stomach is in. Your ears are even with your shoulders. As you get tired, your body is going to want to push that neck forward. It puts a lot of pressure on your spine, on your front neck. Keep your shoulders down, even though they're pinched back. Now we're just going to carry them. Keeping our shoulders over our hips, butts tight. And then the other option that I would have is a lot of times you're unbalanced, correct? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead, you squat, I'll deadlift, put one down, carry one. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> and then what you want to make sure is you're balanced. So I'm not here, I'm still here, I'm squeezing that core, and that's how we're going to walk. On the way back, we can switch hands to be even and walk back. So we could do this with a water jug mm -hmm. and just use what you have around the house. If you don't Absolutely. have free weights, whatever you have that adds a little weight to in your hands will help you learn how to, and it's called a farmer carry, right? When farmer we do the carry. farmer carry. So it's like carrying buckets. So it's yep. perfect for gardening. The only thing you want to really work on is rotation and we don't right. work on that enough. Okay. And there's several ways to work on that. We can do it if you want to grab one sure. weight. 
But this time we're going to go ahead. We're going to go a little wider with our stance. So let's. So say, rotation as far as when we're doing this. So yeah. Okay. Let's okay. say something happens and I have to reach. I have to grab. There's a shoveling. bee. When we're shoveling and you oh, see people me. like crazy. There's a bee. <laughs> there's a there's bee. A bee. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I go to. <laughs> Dang bee. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. They're really good for us. I'm just joking, all you gardeners. All right. So shoveling too. All right. We're going to go down, pick it up. And now we are going to do a... You do a squat, I will do a deadlift. Okay. So getting that good stance. Our stance starts the same, shoulders back, head up, stomach in. Deadlift, you squat. Now as we come up, we're gonna come up, we're gonna bring this to our chest, just like we're carrying something. We're gonna rotate to the left, our right foot is gonna spin, and we're gonna press that up through, back down. You squat, I'll deadlift, back down, up, shoulders are back, rotate, press up. So this one, you can do a little quicker, a little slower. We're kind of doing it in slow mouse. so you can see where it is. And down. Um, last one. Another rotational one would be to have a, have a bucket. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone has buckets. Oh, yeah. So we, fill your gardeners, buckets. We have a lot of buckets. Fill your buckets. <laughs> That's what we should have brought. Like, if you have a bucket, fill your bucket. Right. right? Okay. So let's pretend this is a bucket. Okay. So we have the bucket. Another way to pick up a bucket, right? We would be here, straight down, pull it up. Now we're going to take it to one side. Mm -hmm. This is rotational. And we're going to go ahead and we're just going to go down as far as we can and back up. To add a little bit more... Progression, hand over head. Now stare at that hand over your head. Bucket slides down and back up. Down, staring at that hand and back up. Go ahead and switch sides because we want to be even. And we can even do this with no weight too until we build up, right? Absolutely. Yep. If you are a beginner, no weight would be perfect. You can do this with a single serve water bottle oh, yeah. right so yeah. you, you can limit or add right a bucket empty mm -hmm. at least it gives you that Definitely. motion that you have something in sure. your hand mm -hmm. yeah okay so that's that and then Very good. we can go to the floor for some glute ones that Let's everybody go to the can floor do girl <laughs> You know, we can do, we'll have another partner. Because we want to look good coming and going, okay? Well, I always, <laughs> you know what I say? You make the impression the last thing they see. That's right. Right? <laughs> so you want them to remember you as you leave, for sure. I won't really say what I say when I'm in there. So these are really good. They're hip bridges. If you walk in a gym, you see every female everywhere doing these now on yeah. the machine with a barbell. Right. You, don't need, you don't need that heavy okay. of a weight. Good. Right? Okay. If your feet are elevated, which means if we put them up on a step, up on a chair, it's going to make it a little bit harder, but we're going to start down here today. So we want to make sure that our feet are as close as they can be. The closer they are together, the more core strength we need because it's just like a tripod for a camera. Mm -hmm. If the legs are close, it's going to tip easier. Okay. Same thing with our legs. So anytime we bring them close together, it makes it a little bit harder to balance. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to turn a little sideways. So can you? Mm -hmm. We're going to go down. We don't have to use the weight. We can use the weight. You can put whatever you need right on your hip area. Your heels are down. So I'm going to do it without weight. Just okay. Do Perfect. It. Okay. Your lower back is always on the ground. If you feel it going up, press those heels down and squeeze your belly button. Okay. So right away, push your heels down, squeeze your belly button. Do you feel your back? I do. Yeah. It went right down. Yeah. That is where you want it. Your head is down. Your hands can be at your sides to make it harder. You could put them above you because now it makes you smaller. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start here, and all you're going to do is squeeze your butt cheeks. That's what starts the lift. Push through your heels. One vertebrae at a time. You're going to bring your hips all the way up, and you're going to stop at the top. Do you feel that in your glutes? I do, yes. Nice. Now we're going to roll down one vertebrae at a time. So these are really good for that posterior chain. Go ahead, squeeze. Lower back is on the ground. We're going to pull it up one at a time and then we're going to go ahead and pull it down. So is this a slow movement or? This is a slow movement. Slow movement. Okay. We can also add pulses. Mm -hmm. We can add holds. We can take the ball and put it between our legs and work those inner thighs. I'm going to grab the ball. So if I put the ball here and I put it between my legs as they go up and now I can squeeze that ball 
Release, squeeze that ball, release. It's going to get that outer part of my glute. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring it back down. To make this a little more difficult, go ahead and lift one leg straight up. Push through that heel. Everything else stays the same. Belly is in, back's against the ground. And now push through that one heel and push that foot to the sky. Oh, I feel that. Yep. <laughs> and then bring it back down, leaving that foot pointed to the ceiling. One vertebrae at a time, back up, squeeze, and back down. We're going to switch legs. We have to stretch, we're done. <laughs> Here we go. Heel to the ceiling. When you push up through the one that's on the ground, that heel goes to the ceiling. Press through, squeeze. So squeeze that butt cheek. Bring it back down one vertebrae at a time. Always exhaling right when you feel like you should hold your breath. That's when the exhale should happen. And we're going to go back down. So now we can roll up, if you can roll up, or get up the way you are. And we're going to go ahead and grab a band. I'm going to show you a sit-up that we can do. Okay. If your sit-ups aren't great. Are we sharing the band? We are sharing the band. Cool. We're going to do this one right. together, too. All right. So let's say I am the stronger person to sit up. You let's are. say you are. <laughs> we'll give you the chance. So you're going to put your feet on the outside. Okay. You're kind of locking me down okay. is what you're doing. Got so it. now I can hook my feet here. Mm -hmm. And if I need to, let's say I can't get up off the ground. We're both going to go down. Okay. It'll give us pressure on this band. As we come up, one vertebrae at a time, stomach in, roll up nice and slow. Ah. This keeps our feet down. Tuck that chin. Breathe. Exhale. Stomach in. And we're going to come up. Now, since we can both do sit-ups, we can add to this. So okay. we're going to go down. Mm -hmm. Now when we're here... Keep your elbows by your side, pull the, this to your chin, and bring it back down, and come up. Oh, so okay. we can add exercises, Got right? It. Yeah. So we can partner exercise. Pull it up. Understanding as we're both pulling, the band gets shorter or and tauter, so it's more resistance. Bands are very inexpensive. You can buy a pack, even TJ Maxx mm -hmm. or Amazon, because mm -hmm. Amazon has them. And they do wonders. You can do squats with them and come back up. Very so good. it's awesome. really good for people that have difficulty. Like let's say I'm here and I can't really get up. Mm -hmm. Or every time I come to get up, my feet come up. Mm -hmm. This stabilizes, but because you're helping the other person, mm -hmm. you really isolate everything and oh. you pull it up really, really slowly. So I really like that one from here. That's can, really here, good. I'll lock you this okay. time. You'll be the one. Now we're going to lean back as far as we can, mm -hmm. and we're going to climb the rope. Oh, I did this with you all. So when you <laughs> climb the rope, oh my gosh, you are going up, you are extending that core, and you're pulling that rope down. So this is kind of like weeding, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, because we're holding each other, I bet you can. your quads are firing. Oh yeah, I feel it all through here. Yep. Oh yeah. And it's not your hip flexors. No. And breathe. There we go. Always exhale, exhale. Exhale. All right. So roll okay. it up. I think that, that these are all things that anybody can do at home. Minimal equipment, improvising with the things that we have, and have a better injury-free, stronger gardening Ooh. season this year. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, you're good. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to show you one great stretch. Yes. Okay. Only oh, yeah, stretching. I love stretching. Yeah. I love the stretches at I've the end. I've been stretching more, too, and I never used to really stretch a lot. But, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm reaping the benefits of a little more stretching. We should all stretch. Yes, we should. It's the thing, it's the thing I do the least, but yeah, same here. don't do what I do, do what I say. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to lay down. I love this okay. stretch. Flat back, belly against, right? So still push those heels through. Shoulders flat. You're going to pick up both legs. Let's turn them to the left. So my legs are almost at 90 degrees. I'm here. Once I feel like this is stretching, mm -hmm. you're going to take your bottom foot, the one that's on the ground, and you're going to place it on that top thigh. And now you're going to push down with that top foot. Oh, yes. And you're going to look at your opposite, you're going to turn your hands up and look at your opposite hand as you push down with that leg. Oh, wow. This is going to stretch your entire side of your body. If you don't have time to do a lot of stretches, this one is extremely good. I feel it. And for your lower back. So let's go ahead and it's do it. It's very this. relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. 
It is. This is a good one for before bed, too. Hands up. Bottom leg goes up. Once you feel like you are stretched, go ahead and push it down and then look at that opposite hand. And then from here, we can just go ahead and roll up. And if we can, we can put one leg in front, the other one behind, both hands down, knees stacked over ankle, foot flat, and then straighten that back leg. And then once you're there, feel like you're dropping down without pushing your knee forward. And you should feel that in your quad and your hip flexor mm -hmm. in the back leg. My hip flexors are always tight too, yeah. always. Yeah, most of ours are. <laughs> always breathe through this. Wherever you feel it tight, hold it and concentrate on the air going to that spot. Then you can switch feet, flat back, bring the other one back. Go ahead and press down, stomach in, head up, ears even with shoulders, flat back. And you should hold these for 20 to 30 seconds and do each leg at least twice. Okay. We're going to come up, flat back. Knees are slightly bent. Go ahead, roll it up. Now we're going to stretch out our shoulders, never on your joints. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and grab, stomach is in. Knees are slightly bent, they're soft. Why are we not pushing on our joints? What does so that do? So when you push on your joint, that's where all the pressure goes. Okay. And you can hyperextend. Mm -hmm. You can always um, over stress or pressure the okay. actual ligaments. Yeah. So we always want to keep, we want, really want to keep our joints soft. Okay. And we want to protect them at all times. So this protects our joints. And then you're going to move your arm where you need to move it, right? So I might mm -hmm. have to move mine here, here, here. It's going to depend on where you're tight. So go mm -hmm. ahead and do the other side. Stomach in. Keep that good posture at all times. And then we're going to go over our head. I'm going to show you, but I'm going to grab a band just in case. So let's say you're not flexible enough. So you can go here and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to put not on your joint. You're going to pull that. It's going to stretch out that whole lat. But let's say I can't reach there. You can grab again your bathrobe strap, any kind of strap, and you can grab the band. And now I can just go ahead, flat back, mm -hmm. stomach in, and I can pull on this band and I get that same stretch. So you're stretching your lat through here? Correct. Okay. And my tricep. Okay. And that's a big deal. I mean, we're, with the lifting that we do and everything, I mean, just and being the able pulling. to... Yeah, and the pulling. That makes so a like huge difference. So like all your pulling is your mid traps mm -hmm. and your lats. Right. So that's really, really important. Very good. Nice you're job. awesome. You're oh my awesome. gosh. I'm so, yeah. I'm so grateful. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you try some of these exercises so you can have a pain-free garden season. And these are things that we can do for the rest of our lives. You don't just have to be a gardener to do these things. These are all exercises anybody can do from home and to be stronger and have a better, healthier life. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye.